Hello everybody, welcome back to part seven of the Willys Project. I just want to knock out a few things on the list for uh, the end of the year. I've got a sore right hand at the moment and I can't be uh, tackling anything that's too labor intensive. So I'm gonna check the oil in both differentials. We're gonna inspect the uh, drive shafts and I wanna finally get around to uh, inspecting the lights just to see if they all work or not. All right, here I am under the rear differential. We want to make sure it has gear oil and we want to inspect the gear oil, see what it looks like. This is just a square plug, it shouldn't be all that tight. But of course, no, it's not bad. For your information, the standard level of oil and differential is right about to the bottom of the fill plug. So when we take the plug out, there shouldn't be a bunch of oil that comes out because the fill level should be ideally right at the bottom of the plug but you never know that's why we check these things okay so far so good now this hole is large enough that I can get my pinky finger in there but if the hole is smaller than that I like to use a little piece of uh, line from like a weed eater or something uh, anyway I should be able to reach in there with my pinky and find the tip of the oil and I did All right, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but that's some decent looking oil. It's not uh, water contaminated. It just looks like regular oil to me. So uh, we're gonna count that as a win and put the plug back in and we'll go check the front. It's at a good level and the oil looks good just like the rear. So it's always nice when we can inspect things and find no issues, right? All right, now we're gonna take a look at the drive shafts. This is the rear section of the rear drive shaft. I've got one of the rear wheels jacked up and I can spin the wheel with my hand and we can get a look at this drive shaft as it rotates. Good news right off the bat is that we don't have a bunch of leakage coming from here. So that means that seal and air is still doing what it should be doing. The U-joint seems to be all right. Now let's go ahead and rotate this around a little bit. We're just looking in here now for uh, cracks and failures. It looks okay there. Let's point it towards the front of the truck now and look that direction. All seems to be all right. I'm going to do one more test here. I'll be right back. All right, here I've got a two by four sitting on the ground and I've got it just a hair below the drive shaft. And if we spin this again, we should be able to tell if the drive shaft is straight or not. So let's do this. Here we go. Let's move on to the front. All right, now I've got one of the front wheels jacked up. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm just uh, spinning the right front wheel with my hand. All right, keep your eyes right there. We're gonna do our redneck straightness test here. You can obviously see how much smaller the front drive shaft is compared to the rear. So in this vehicle, when you're in four wheel drive, the rear wheel drive is still doing most of the uh, work. Just like the back, it appears that our pinion seals in here are in decent condition because they don't seem to be leaking. So I've driven the truck around the property a little bit here and there in rear wheel drive, and I've also driven it around in four wheel drive, but can't really tell if the four-wheel drive is working when you're in the vehicle um, unless you're in slippery conditions you can look out the window and see the wheel spinning or something like that so i've got the truck lifted off the ground 
on all fours. I'm gonna start it up and make sure the four wheel drive works. This lever here is the front wheel drive selector. And this lever here is the low and high range selector. So right now this lever is all the way forward and this is pulled back. So the way it's engaged right now, we're in rear wheel drive or two wheel drive only in high gear. So if we want to switch to four wheel drive, we move this to neutral just for the moment. And then we pull this lever back like that. And then this should go a click farther forward into low like that. Now we're in four low. So now let's start the truck and make sure all four wheels spin. I think everything is working as it should, which is really good news. The horn button just pops off, and I think this is why it's rattling. You can see there's two kind of ball mount deals that it clicks into. Well, this one is missing right here, so it's probably rattling up, up against that. Well, I just turned the camera off and then I looked back down there and look what I found. That's the missing piece. Let's see if we can put it back in there and uh, could it be that easy? Well, I sure appreciate an easy fix from time to time. And right now the horn button is not rigged into the system. They have a uh, external button down here. All right, now I'm gonna do something that will hopefully be easy. We're just gonna check to see if the lights all work. Headlights, blinkers, tail lights, brake lights. We'll start with the headlights and the tail lights. All right, looks like the tail lights work. Let's go check out the headlights. Keep in mind those are six volt bulbs, so they're not gonna be super bright. Let me try the high beams. When I turn the high beams on, we actually get an indicator there right below the word beam. So that's headlights. High beams, we get a little uh, red light. Switch back to the low and then turn them off. All right, let's try the blinkers. Left. And right. It's interesting somebody wired both of these up to be the blinker. You could have gone with perhaps the outer one for the blinker and the inner one to be the taillights, but uh, 
They wired them both in together for some reason. Let's check the left. All right, let's go for brake lights now. Now we're gonna test headlights, taillights with the blinker. Lights on, left blinker. Well, that's interesting. We have no blinker and this one over here is not illuminating. Let's try the right blinker. Same thing. All right, let me turn the blinker off. It's not blinking in the front of the vehicle either. All right, the blinkers are off now, but we still don't have a light here. Did that just burn out? All right, lights are off now. Let's just try blinkers only. Well, if both of these are working with the blinker on, but not with the tail light. That means that this is probably a dual filament bulb and one of the filaments is burnt out or something is wrong with the wiring. All right, these are just the tail lights again. And you can see that this one is not working at all. So might have to get a new bulb for that one. Let me see what kind of bulb it is and then we'll go from there. This is one of my Model T drawers here. I've got a bunch of different bulbs in here, 12 volt and six volt. Mostly dual filament, actually, a couple single. But uh, sometimes it pays to be a hoarder. Well, this is bizarre. Usually there's two screws that hold the lens to the uh, lens housing, like this one has two screws. But this one has no screws and it spins. And it looks like you're just supposed to pry it off of there. That is goofy. You see how this one is metal? This one is plastic. And yes, we do indeed have one dual filament bulb. It looks like both filaments are still intact, but sometimes you can't uh, tell just by looking at it. Well, we're gonna try this one. The bulb itself is a little bit larger, but the, you know, the base is the same. And this just pops back on, I guess. Headlights are on. Wow. Look how bright that new bulb is compared to the other ones. Let's try blinkers with headlights. Nope. Yeah, the blinkers don't work in the front either, so. Headlights off, right blinker on. Yeah, look how dim they are now with the blinkers. Because that other, because that other bulb that we switched out is so bright now, I'm gonna put a new bulb in the left side also and see if it makes this side as bright as the other because that's really nice and bright. Okay, uh, tail lights. Oh yeah, wow, that made a huge difference. These bulbs on the outside are illuminated also, but they're very dim. Let's try brakes. Brakes with lights on. Lights off. Brakes on. All right, I have it. All right, I'm back in the truck here and it is intentionally dark so I can show you what we have for dash lights. Turn the lights on and we have, we have dash lights. They're, you know, 
minimal at best, but we do have some illumination. I guess that is what it is. That might be one of those things too that we could try to replace the bulbs in there and that might uh, make it a little bit brighter. Is the, so the last thing to check is the uh, brake switch on the master cylinder. I can get up there again with my lovely assistant in the cab and I'll have her uh, press on the brake pedal. And I can use them. Well, I wasn't able to get it on camera, but I crawled underneath the truck there and put the uh, probe on the uh, master cylinder brake switch. And I'm getting power coming into the switch, but there's no power coming out of the switch, kind of like I suspected. Well, if anybody's wondering why in the world I haven't checked the fuse box yet and done all this other work, well, this truck doesn't have a fuse box. Come to think of it, I'm not sure I've seen one single fuse as I've been uh, poking around on this thing so far. So I guess I'll wrap this up for now. I'll get the electrical components ordered. And then when my hand heals up all the way, we'll go ahead and get the brakes inspected. Uh, the pedal feels good to me. We have no signs of leaking at the wheel cylinders or the master cylinder. The truck does stop when you press on the pedal. Uh, you just don't know what you're going to find in there. It just could be a bunch of rusty components that, you know, everything will need to be replaced. Or what I'm hoping is that it has had a brake job sometime in the last 10 or 20 years and we can kind of work with what we got. So it looks like we'll need to get a new uh, brake switch for the master cylinder, um, new blinker relay, and I'll probably get a couple extra bulbs so we can replace the ones in the outside lights as well because i really like how the inside ones are nice and bright now anyway thanks everybody for watching i hope everybody has a healthy safe and enjoyable uh, christmas and new year